you can think of it as like a person and that if a person is healthy, they tend to do a better job at fighting off infections and diseases. The Great Lakes are the same way. We've made them sick, which means they're susceptible to a lot of these invasive species moving in. It takes a lot to explain to people how impacted the Great Lakes are, and but by the time they're actually they actually see it, oftentimes it's it's you know at the devastation level, it's it's catastrophic. A lot of people don't realize that the, the extent you can't see across it. I mean. How the hell do you eradicate something out of there? They have to be stopped at the source. Unless they're in it, forget it. In the battle against invasive species, one of the most important things we can do is try to figure out how they get into a particular area. Because once they get in, they're very, very difficult to get rid of. So we have to stop them from getting in and establishing a foothold. So in the Great Lakes, we need to figure out how invasive species are getting into the Great Lakes. For example, they're coming in through ballast water, through canals, and through introductions, uh, intentional and accidental, and we have to figure out ways to stop that. The more invasive species that get established, um, the more complex things are going to be. So for example, when you look at the zebra mussel, the zebra mussel in invaded the Great Lakes. Everyone saw impacts from water intake pipes to water clarity to swimming uh, and use of beaches from um, zebra mussels. So when you look at those impacts, they were huge, but most people haven't connected the dot between the invasive zebra mussel and other species like the round goby and even the rusty crayfish. The round goby is actually the, the native predator of the zebra mussel in its native ecosystem. So really we weren't able to get round goby populations established until we had the zebra mussel. And once we had the zebra mussel, it opened the door for other invasive species like the round goby, like the rusty crayfish. Now, ironically, alewife numbers are dropping these days, and there's a huge cry to increase alewife numbers. So it, at one time, is vilified, people hated them, wanted to get rid of them. Now people are trying to increase their numbers because salmon have less to eat, and salmon seem to be negatively impacted by this. So something that was vilified is now you know, actually being managed, and we're trying to bring them back. When we look at the history, and recreate the history of fish communities, we can see that invasive species are having a significant impact on our native fish communities. They are changing the composition of them. Uh, some native fishes are doing fairly well, some are doing very, very poorly. We're seeing some native fishes disappearing from particular habitats when invasive species move in, and we're seeing drops in numbers of other fish. Uh, a lot of people don't know about perch or walleye, but mostly the perch are, they're cannibals. They're cannibalistic. If they don't have anything to eat, to eat their young. Where's our next fish coming from? If mama and papa are using them for dinner. So I think no matter what the future of the Great Lakes looks like, if we don't invest into managing it and protecting it, then it will certainly see more devastation and um, negative impacts from invasive species. We've known the Asian carp have been moving towards the Great Lakes for 20 to 30 years. Uh, so it was not a sneak attack on Chicago. But they are moving slowly, not as rapidly as most people think, but it is going to take a long time to do anything about it too. And we're talking years and probably millions of dollars. So will we be able to react fast enough to stop the Asian carp? Right now it's the race is neck and neck and we don't know who's going to win. You know, you really can't look to one variable. As long as the humans are going to be interacting and people are going to be interacting with the Great Lakes, we need to be aware of the impacts of invasive species and continue to try to prevent the in, in future invasion. Yeah, many of them are below the radar. People don't even really know they're there, even though they're having a huge impact on the ecosystems of the Great Lakes. If they're not aware of it, how are they gonna care? So everybody can be involved in this fight. There are a number of things that people can do. And just, and just awareness is very important as well. Uh, invasive species can have a huge impact on our native fishes and the ecosystems in general, uh, not just fishes, but also invertebrates and, and plants and everything else. And they can disrupt the ecosystem, sometimes in ways we don't anticipate. Sometimes we bring in invasive species intentionally, thinking that they're gonna do something, for instance, provide a sport fishery or eat up plants that we consider a nuisance or, or provide food for sport fish or something like that. But then they can spin out of control and have unintended consequences. The big question is, can the native species adapt rapidly if these changes occur too quickly? 
So you know, how fast can a native species adapt to the changing conditions? So it's like watching a race in slow motion. You know this invasive species is moving in, it's spreading, will we react in time?